so antigen can be organism it can be molecules or mostly large molecule or macro molecule or it can be a part of molecule which can be recognized by our immune cells will be calling antigen now uh, antigen now antigens chemically antigen can be protein antigen can be carbohydrates antigen can be lipid okay like uh, mostly antigen are protein in nature the chemical structure will be protein so it is like more than 90 percent of antigen are protein uh, so you have to remember this point for mcqs that majority of antigen are protein uh, like if i can say rh rhesus which is present on blood group which make the blood group positive if if rh is present it will uh, the blood group will be positive if rh is not present the blood group group will be negative this is very very important we will uh, I, I will let you understand that uh, there are two types of antigen the one is called t dependent antigen and the another is called t independent antigen so i will make another video on that but here you have to understand that majority of antigen mostly more than 90 percent of antigen are protein like in example rhesus rh okay then we do have antigen or immunogens carbohydrates carbohydrates mean sugar and it can also be called saccharide Sacar saccharides is like in urdu we say sakar and sakar is for sugar okay so carbohydrate sugar or saccharides all are same thing and like abo blood group system like blood group a blood group b antigen a antigen b are that is what we call carbohydrate or sugar so we have to understand that abo blood group systems are the antigen of a b a b a a b o blood group are carbohydrates and r h are the protein okay now uh, it can be also antigen can also be uh, lipid or fat okay like lipoprot lipoprotein like okay now you have to remember the only lipid in our body which is antigen is cardiolipin so remember cardiolipin is the only antigen in our is the only lipid in our body which is antigen now this antigen can be infectious or non-infectious like infectious microbial structure like cell wall flagella phylli whatever in the structure of uh, microbes in virus bacteria okay that is going to be uh, that is going to be infectious antigen and um, some microbes are microbes can also secrete um, the toxin so microbial toxins can be antigen now non infectious antigen like allergens okay like if we have allergy to dust fallen they all have proteins and that proteins are antigen so they all have proteins you no know, like dust fallen hair food b venom which is having melatonin and like some drugs can also be uh, uh, lead to uh, will be like antigen okay so this is how you have to remember now we will be dividing the immune system into there are two okay now hep antigen can be heptin or it can be immunogen like if the size is if the size of antigen is less than 6000 delta that will going to be heptin so heptin are very very small okay now very very small antigen so the small antigens for which the size is less than 60000 6000 delta that cannot elect or stimulate the immune system that's why it is called heptin okay but if you want to convert the now another one is immunogen the immunogen size can be larger than 6000 delta okay the heptin size is less than 6000 delta and the immunogen immunogen size will be more than 6000 delta and immunogen are large molecule they are large enough to to induce to, uh, to elect or to stimulate the immune response okay now if you want to convert this heptin into immunogen now this heptin could be bind with a carrier protein okay with a carrier protein then the size of heptin will be large and this is how we can convert the heptin into immunogen like okay now you could see here now this is uh, this is this is you can see this is a carrier protein okay now this is heptin this heptin cannot stimulate the immune response but if this heptin bind with a carrier protein like this black one is carrier protein now this is called immunogen and it can stimulate the immune response okay now
we will be explaining a little bit more. Now you see here, this is how, how we can, how heptin become immunogen. Like as I already said that the size of, the size of heptin are very small. Heptins are very small molecule, like the molecular weight is less than 60, 6,000 delta. Okay, not 60, 6,000 delta. Okay. So to become like you see, this is heptin, this is carrier protein. Now this carrier protein will bound or bind with heptin and then heptin uh, will become like this. So heptin and carrier protein are together. They are called now immunogen. They can elect or stimulate the immune response. Like the most common example for heptin are, uh, are, are viruses. You know, sometimes we are infected with virus and our body, we didn't produce the sign and symptom. Why? Because viruses are heptin and that cannot stimulate our immune response. But after a long time, if the virus stay in our body, then that virus, because it is a heptin, sometimes it's bound with the carrier protein. And after that, it stimulate the immune response and then, then we produce the sign and symptom. So this is the reason. Mostly, we are, sometimes we are infected with virus. But there is no sign in symptom. And why? Because viruses are heptin. They are very small. They cannot stimulate the immune response or immune system. But after some time, like for years, when this dead virus is present in our body, uh, there will be mutation in dead viruses. And because of that, it, that virus will be able to bind with a carrier protein. And when that virus is bind with a carrier protein, then it will, it, it will act as an immunogen. Immunogen means that they can stimulate our immune response and the molecular size of it are very large. I mean more than 6,000, okay? Now, if immunogen size is more than 6,000, that is, will be immunogen. And if the immunogen size is more than 10,000, that is going to be more potent immunogen, okay? Now, by mechani mechanism by which it can work, there are two uh, mechanisms by which the uh, uh, heftin can work, okay? Now, if you see, uh, the antigen is going to be presented by antigen presenting cell. The antigen presenting cells are macrophage, B cell, the entritic cell. Now, this antigen is going to be uh, this antigen is going to be taken by macrophage, and then this macrophage will uh, will uh, will digest. Okay, and then MHC2 molecule will be attached with this, and then this macrophage is going to present this antigen. Okay, with the help of MHC2 class molecule to the T cell. So it present the antigen to the T cells and the T cells having a TCR that is called T cell receptor. And as this antigen presents to the T cells, the T cells going to be activated. And there will be secretion of the T cells, mostly the T helper 2 cell will be activated. And T helper 2 cells then secrete interleukin 4, interleukin 5 which convert the B cell into plasma cell to produce antibodies like IgE, Ig, Ig, uh, IgE and IgA, okay, the antigens. Now it can also be, as I told you, that these antigens are going to be presented by uh, antigen presenting cells. So it can also be presented by B cells. Now, okay, there is IgM. IgM is already present on the B cell surface. IgM and IgD antibodies are already present on the B cell surface. So this is the B cell surface. This is we have IgM and with this IgM the antigen will bound, okay. This antigen now having a carrier protein, okay, so you must have to understand this. this if this is going to uh, activate the immune response, it must having a carrier protein. Now this antigen is going to bound with IgM which is present on the uh, surface of the B cells. Now this B cells will engulf this antigen and I will show you uh, at the end of the video I will show you how this how the process inside occur in the antigen present cell okay now this antigen will get inside the B cell the B cell will digest it and then the, the B cell will present through MHC2 molecule it will present this antigen into into T cells okay so macrophage can also present it to the T cell with the help of MHC2 class molecule B cell can also present this uh, antigen to T cells with the help of uh, MHC2 molecule now they are going to now when the T cell activated this T cells is actually uh, is T, T helper 2 cells okay then T helper 2 cells is going to secrete interleukin 4 interleukin 5 and then these interleukin 4 and interleukin 5 help us the B cells to convert into plasma cells and then these plasma cells will secrete the antibodies, okay? Uh, antibodies like IgE, 
like uh, for interleukin 4 that will be IgE for interleukin 5 that will be IgA now the example for uh, heptins are viruses as I already told you guys viruses and drugs like penicillin methyl dopa they are very having a small size a small molecular weight sorry and poison oak oil and some cosmetic and synthetic clots these are the example of heptin but the most common example for heptin is virus okay now let us explain how the heptin how the antigen uh, processes occur in the antigen presenting cells okay like you see this this is antigen this antigen is going to be bound with the carrier protein and then this pro this antigen is going to be phagocytose by the antigen presenting cells here i am showing you macrophage and as this phago phagocytosis occur then will be phagosomes okay like this membrane will bound this this antigen and it will become like phagosome now this phagosome here we do having a lysosome so with this phagosome lysosomes is going to be lysosome is going to be fused with the phagosome and there will be formation of phagolysosome okay there is the formation of phagolysosome now this phagolysosome then this phagolysosome is going to uh, uh, is going to digest that antigen but still if, if it doesn't digest here because we are attaching the lysosomes now and this lysosomes have enzyme which will digest the antigen and now antigens convert into small particle now this this pegolysosome will then fuse with endosome which containing um, uh, MHC2 molecule. Now this is MHC2 molecule. Now both of these will be fused. And when the, these the fusions of pegolysosomes and endosomes occur, pegolysosomes are containing the particle of the antigen and endosomes are containing the MHC2 molecule. And then when they fuse, this antigen will come and attached with the MHC2 molecule and then MHC2 molecule will be uh, expressing uh, express on the cell membrane and they will 